Thanks a lot. Um, so yeah, absolutely. So modern web apps with, with Safe Stack. So um, I'm going to do a couple of, of demos, but, but a bit of slides as well, a couple of diagram pictures. It's really just about um, an, an alternative look at, at web programming on .NET using F Sharp and maybe um, uh, demystifying some of the, the myths about F Sharp and, and just showing you you can do these kind of really compelling end-to-end -end apps that are standards compliant, um, but just using F Sharp as well. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll kick right off into the, the slides. So just a little bit about me first. Um, so my name's Isaac Abraham, of course. Um, I've been a C-Shop dev since, since it came out, so almost 20 years now, which makes me feel quite old. Um, I've been an F-Sharp dev for just over five years now, um, pretty much exclusively doing that now. Um, I'm the founder of CIT, so we're an F-Sharp consultancy. We do training in dev as well. And, and someone asked me recently, is it actually possible to build a company in F-Sharp, doing F-Sharp? And absolutely, yeah. We're doing pretty much the same things as, as most consultancies do in terms of, you know, line of business apps, uh, ETLs, data transformation exercises, and so on. Um, pretty much the same things you do in C Sharp. We just happen to be using F Sharp. Um, I've been working on SafeStack for about three, four years now, nearly. Um, and it's going from strength to strength, really, kind of in tandem with .NET, which is why I'm kind of excited about .NET 6. It's like every new release, some new features come out on the stack that we can take advantage of, which is great. So um, what is SafeStack? So um, when it first came out, we had this really long-winded explanation. We then sort of simplified it to just the best way to write functional first web applications. By functional first, I mean um, doing things in a style that takes advantage of things like immutability and expression. So typical sort of core fundamentals of uh, functional programming languages. But to be honest, having used it for, for a while now, I, I would just scribble out the functional first and we just think it's the best way to write web apps. Um, obviously, you need to know how to write F sharp, but if you can do that, then we think this is a really, really compelling way to be productive and, and, and enjoyable as well in terms of, of doing your day to day. So I'm going to start just with a really quick demo. Um, not code, just to show you though, this is what you could do with a safe app. So I'm just going to leave uh, Mr. PowerPoint and jump into Mr. Edge. So this is um, a web app you can get to today. It's hosted on Azure. So this is a, um, a website that basically lets you search for property house price sales in the UK. So every month or three months, the UK government publishes every property that's been sold in the UK. Um, and this site is basically running on Azure. We're using things like blob storage, Azure search, app service, all the standard things you would expect to use in a, a data-driven web application, as it were. Um, it's running with JavaScript, React. Uh, it's using CSS styling like Bulma and so on. And I'll just do a couple of quick sort of um, examples of what you can do with the app, so you can see. So I'm going to search for, for Tottenham. And basically, we can click search, of course, and assuming that the index is, is, is woken up. I'm running this on a free instance, so it is possible that uh, the index may need to wake up again. Let's just see this. OK, let's refresh that. Let's make sure that the site's actually up. OK, maybe this is the demo gods actually playing a trick on me, because it was working just about 10 minutes ago when I tried it in the uh, in the uh, in, in the backstage room. So uh, let's leave that for the minute, just in case it's uh, it's gone down a minute. Maybe, ah, maybe it's back up now. So that might have been actually um, Microsoft just playing a trick on me there. Let's try again. So all right, there we go. So we're back. Um, so I get find as you type. So this is like using suggestions from Azure Search. If I click one of those, we get a response back from Azure Index. Um, we get sort of the normal things you might expect from a, a modern app. So I can do column headings. I can drag and drop. I can do filtering. I can do sorting and so on. Um, if I click on one of these properties, it's going to show me a little um, pop-up with some more details. I get an open um, pigeon map. So it's a, a open source map component. It's React. It's not like an F-sharp component or anything like that. Um, I can also do things like, rather than search based on, on name, I can search based on a postcode. So if I click on one of these postcodes, it's now going to show me properties in relation to that property. And I can click on a map here, and I can see all the properties in relation to a specific sale. I can get crime stats for the area if I want to using another React component. So this is using recharts. Um, so all standards compliant stuff. Um, we also get some sort of interactivity in the app as well. So here's a postcode. Um, if I type in something that's not a valid postcode, then it's going to tell me that as I type. 
But if I type in a valid one, then we'll get green. We can go ahead. So we've got like client side validation here as well. Um, that's not similar to Blazor where it's going back to the server on every action sort of thing. This is pure JavaScript code running in the browser. So that's kind of the demo. Then now I'll go back to the uh, back to the slide. So I did survive the the demo gods there, which is good. Um, so the question I always ask is, how much of that do you think was F sharp? Usually people say, oh, maybe a bit of the back end, 25 to 50%, maybe at most. Um, the reality is that over 90% of that was all F sharp, a tiny bit of JavaScript. And, and if I go to the next slide, you'll see the only JavaScript file actually in this repository, which is open, it's public, you can have a look on it, is actually just a Webpack file. So that's the only bit of JavaScript. Everything else is F sharp. There's one tiny HTML um, boilerplate file that is just the shell, basically. But everything else is, is, is F sharp. Um, so what is F sharp? Um, what is F sharp really? What safe stack really? So um, it's an acronym. It stands for four things. So the S stands for Saturn, which is what we use for our server side web programming. Saturn is just um, a set of extensions on top of ASP.NET Core. So this is an important thing is that F-sharp and, and, and SafeStack doesn't go away from like the, the standard .NET tech. It sits on top of it. So think of this as some opt-in extensions that make ASP.NET really, really great from an F-sharp perspective. But you still get all of the standard um, features and the standard abstractions that you would see in ASP.NET Core as well. Um, a extends for Azure. So that's basically our cloud hosting platform. You can, of course, use whatever you want to host SafeStack apps. So it could be AWS, you could use Docker, you could run it in IIS locally, whatever you want, really. We tend to just recommend Azure as a starting point. It's um, a really good place. App service is pretty powerful. It's very mature. So we think that's a good place to start. Um, F stands for Fable, which is this technology that compiles F sharp into JavaScript. So similarly to how TypeScript can compile into JavaScript, Fable is a way to compile F sharp into JavaScript. So once you've got that, you can just say F sharp for both client and server. And E is standing for Elmish, which is this web programming model. Um, so you may be familiar with things like MVC or MVVM or MVP as um, UI programming models. So with SafeStack, we're taking this model that was popularized in the Elm programming language called MVU, which stands for Model View Update. And it's a really nice model, it's pretty simple, and it works beautifully with the kind of functional model that F-sharp espouses. Um, why would you use SafeStack then? So I've told you what, now the why. So one, it's super productive. Um, you basically can focus on F-sharp rather than JavaScript in the browser. So if you're coming from a static background, you know, C-sharp or F-sharp, um, going to JavaScript is probably a bit unusual where you don't have types as such. So you can use F-sharp, it's super powerful language, it's really great, it's pretty simple, it's robust, type safe. Um, you can share types between the client and the server, which I'll talk about in a bit as well. And there's lots of tooling. So on the server, we've got you know Visual Studio or Rider, VS Code. Um, in the browser land, you've got things like all the React tooling that you get normally. You can use all of that with SafeStack. Um, it's fun as well. So people that use SafeStack, we, we hear this constantly that they just find it such a rewarding experience, particularly if they're coming from a non-web background. So maybe there's someone who's used to working on the back end only, they're doing back end APIs, but they've never felt able to write front end development. So SafeStack is a really good place for them as well. Um, you get stuff done quickly and productively. Um, flexible, so this is maybe a bit where SafeStack is a bit different to say Blazor, which is more of, I think, a framework, whereas SafeStack is just, here's a set of libraries. We put them together in a nice shrink wrap package, um, but you can use them however you want, really. So you can use any JavaScript library. f -sharp has nice interop with JavaScript through Fable. Of course, f -sharp runs on .NET, so you can use any NuGet package you want as well um, on the server. We really don't stop you. We provide some sort of opinionated starting points, but how you use it is really up to you. Um, and it's a safe bet, and the acronym, um, the uh, the pun there is not intended. Um, by that I mean it runs on mature platforms. You know, JavaScript and React have been around; they're super popular. .NET is obviously really, really good, um, and you get commercial support. We obviously do do support for for SafeStack. We do consultancy and training, but you'll find people doing training, of course, on Azure, on .NET in general, on JavaScript and React as well. So it's it's a platform that's not going anywhere. It's it's really popular. We're just kind of riding that wave on top of it, if you will. A um, little bit more. So this is really about um, 
why I like SafeStack and why I think it's pretty popular in the F-Shot world now is that we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to build from scratch. We're trying to, as I just said, sort of ride the wave of these technologies. So we want to sit on top of ASP.NET Core. We don't want to hide that away. We don't want to hide JavaScript or React. We just want to say we love these technologies. If you want to use them, we provide a nice way of doing that with a single language that's simple, it's robust, it's performant, it's type safe, but you don't have to then worry too much about how do I compile into JavaScript and so on. Um, and can I really do full stack F sharp? Like, really? I know you showed me a demo, but, but how does that really work? So just to, to give you an example of what I'm talking about there, you can write F sharp once. On the right-hand side, we've got Elmish and Fable for the client. On the left-hand side, Saturn and Giraffe. That boils down to ASP.NET Core and React in the safe stack. And then underneath that, it's JavaScript and NetCore. So from a safe stack perspective at an F sharp dev, I don't see JavaScript as a programming language. I see it as an, an IL. I see it as an analogous to like MSIL on the dot side. I'd never write JavaScript. I write F sharp. Um, that compiles into JavaScript, which then runs on the browser. I don't think there's anything too controversial about that. Like Scott Hanselman was talking about this like 10 years ago now. Um, and just the last bit that I'll touch on before I jump into some more code focused demos, and we've still got about 15 minutes. Um, so you can share F sharp code as well. So it's not just that you can write F sharp for both platforms, but imagine you've got um, you know client server messaging and you want to have a contract or a type that you know the server is going to return this type and the client's going to receive it. Well, you can write that just once in F sharp and we'll take care of compiling it into both platforms for you. So if you've been using you know, um, C Sharp on the back end and maybe TypeScript on the front end, you have to think about that yourself currently. You know, I've got a DTO in C Sharp. Let's make an equivalent one in TypeScript. Maybe use a code generator to do that. So with SafeStack, you don't have to do any of that. That's just out of the box supported. Um, one goes through the .NET compiler, one goes through Fable, and then you end up again at the bottom with .NET and JavaScript. So I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to get started. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll run uh, an app and basically just demonstrate how that works and, and kind of show you the dev cycle as well, um, depending on how much time we've got. So I'm just going to switch over to a terminal now. Um, and I'm just going to show you how to create a new safe app. So this is an empty folder. And if I just type .NET new, I think it's dash dash list, you'll see I've got a whole load of .NET templates here, one of which is safe stack. So if you go on to NuGet and search for safe.template or safe stack, you'll see this um, this package that you can install. Once you've got that, you can simply type .NET new safe. Now I've already configured .NET, um, .NET CLI to, to be F sharp by default. So I didn't even have to type lang F sharp, but to be honest, safe only supports F sharp. So you should be good just to do that. Even if you're using um, C sharp primarily today. So I've done that, I've got now an app. What has that really got for me? So I'm just gonna switch into VS code. Um, let's get code up, here we go. So just to show you what sort of things you'll get out of the box. So we give you like a lock, a set of lock files for NPM, the equivalent for NuGet as well. You get your Webpack file. We have uh, some Git ignore stuff. So the basics out of the box. We also give you a set of test projects if you if you if you fancy on doing both server and client side tests. But the main thing is basically you'll get a client project, a server project, and a shared project. So obviously the server project is one that's going to run your backend ASP.NET on. The client side one will run your JavaScript app, which is actually all in F sharp. As you can see, these are normal .NET projects. So FS proj, um, which is just the, the equivalent of, of an F sharp CS proj, if you will. Um, and the shared project that's referenced by both the client and the server, so that any stuff we write here is gonna be compiled into both of those different um, client and server. So there we've got, for example, some contracts. You know, I've got a, a to-do type that I wanna share on client and server. So that's kind of it um, in terms of the, the code. I'm now gonna jump into a running app. There's basically this, what you get out of the box, with just a couple of changes so that I can do a quick demo for you as well. So I'm gonna run and show you what you get out of the box when you start this up. So once you do a .NET new and you, hit, and you type .NET run after that, after a short delay, you'll basically get a, a to-do list app. So very simple, it gives you a couple of to-dos. I can write something else that I wanna do. So let's say learn, F sharp. And then I'm going to add that on here. And now we've added that. Now that's gone to the back end. 
it saved it into an in-memory list. So the, the to-do app out of the box, it doesn't use SQL. We've just got a, an in-memory list basically to store the list of, of to-do items. And then it's obviously put it back onto the client. Now, what I want to do is just show you briefly what the code looks like. And then I want to actually add in another feature, which is basically to reset the list. So I want to have a button here that's going to say, click this button and we'll remove everything from this list and also tell the server to remove it from the back end. So I'm going to jump into Visual Studio now. So I've showed you it running in code, um, or at least some, some code in VS Code. I'm going to show you, you can do it in VS as well. Nothing wrong with that. So we've got three files here. I've got my server. So this is the back end of the app. It's 50 lines to run the whole app, not too much there. Um, we've got our shared file. So this is basically our shared contracts and our API. So this is like the, the API, if you will, of the functions that you can go between client and server. So we've got a get the list of to-dos and, and how to add a single to-do in as well. And then we've got our client side page, which is a little bit larger, maybe 100 lines or so, which has got the whole UI. So you can see how I've got a function called view, which has got all the styling. And it looks a bit unusual what are all these square brackets. But if you think of these as angle brackets instead, it's actually not so different from what you might see otherwise. It's really just um, React with, with a little wrapper on top of it for the Bulma style sheet library. Yeah. We've also got um, our types at the top here. So I'll just talk a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit about this now. So um, if I come back to what I said before about the Elmish model, we have this thing called model view and update. So essentially what that says is we have a model of, of what is our application storing in the client in the browser. So we have a list of our to-do items and the input. So that reflects or relates to what's in this text box here. And then we have a list of commands or events or messages of what can happen in the system. So whenever some to-dos are loaded from the back end, um, when someone has changed the input, when we want to add a to-do and when we've saved the to-do. Um, and then we have an update function, which is effectively every time something happens, what do I do? And this is using pattern matching, which if you're using C-sharp, I think eight or nine onwards, you'll you'll be familiar with this name. Um, F-sharp has had this since the start. It's, it's like a... It's the only way really of doing conditional logic. We don't have switch case and we, we have if then, but no one really uses it for this kind of logic. Pattern matching is really how we do everything. We can say given some sort of message, if it's a loaded to do, then do this. If it's a set, then do this and so on. Um, and then finally, like I said already, we've got a view function, which is basically here's the model, please render it on the screen. So the first thing I wanna do is just show you what the, the flow might be of, of adding in an extra command. So I'm gonna start by saying, right, I want a new message, which is called reset. So that's our new command, our new action in the app. I type that in and down here now, I'll just zoom this in a bit, you'll see that I get a green squiggly underneath there. And if I look on here, it says incomplete pattern matches, you didn't handle reset. In other words, the compiler's telling me now there's another type of command in the system I need to actually handle that. I need to do something with that. Otherwise, I'm not handling every case. So I'm going to add in a match here. And I'm going to say, if we've got a reset command, then take the model and simply set all our to-dos to an empty list. And there's no other command we're going to sort of send on downstream, so nothing there. Um, that's our sort of logic done. Now we actually have to add in some UI. So for this, I'm actually going to switch to um, split screen mode. If I can handle that, let's try. There we are. So now we've got code on here. We've got we've got a browser over there. So obviously, one of the big things of, of .NET six is is hot module replacement. Now, actually, F# -Shop doesn't support that, um, but it's always had hot module reload in the browser. It's had it for years because again, F# -Shop runs on top of JavaScript, and JavaScript has had this hot module replacement for a long, long time. So I can basically go in here and say, right, I want to add a new button. The app's running already. Let's just copy this, this bit of code. Indent it as well, otherwise I'll get red squigglies, which are bad. I'm going to change the text to reset. Um, let's save that there. And then with a bit of luck, now we get the button called reset. And notice that the, the app's still going. State hasn't changed. And on click, I want to send a reset message. And I also want to change the logic for disabled so that it's basically the only time that button is enabled is if we've got some to-dos in the list. So I can say disabled if the to-do list is empty. So if it's empty, make the button available, otherwise it's disabled. 
or vice versa rather. So I've saved that and now that's available. And just to show you, I can do other things. I can change the color to uh, let's make it is warning. But this is more than just, um, you know, small little things. You can like design your UI as you go, trying things out, seeing how it looks. And if you're happy, then, you know, off we go. So I'll just click that now. And you can see now we've reset the list, all of it's gone. Um, the problem is that's only happened on the client. The server's still got the full list in memory because if I reset it, reload it, you'll see it all comes back again. So let's now add in a message that's going to go to the back end as well and how we do the, the communication between the two. So we've got this API here that I touched on earlier, and I want to add a new message onto that called reset. So it's going to take in no arguments. In F sharp, void is, is, is called unit, um, and it's going to return nothing as well. So I've added in this extra method in my contract, which is my shared file that, that gets compiled to both. And then I'm going to go to the server, and I'm going to have to add in an implementation for it, of course. So fun of unit, and I'm going to say goes to asynchronously. So this is like, if you've not seen F-sharp before, this is like async await, this block. Um, and then in there, I'm going to go to my to-do um, list, which is this in-memory um, normal.net list, and I'm just going to say clear. And then in the client, where I had my message before, which was um, resetting it on the client only, I'm going to add that to the server as well. So I'm going to send a message to the server that says asynchronously start that method, which will be called reset. And you can see we get IntelliSense here. I get all the different methods that are available. So there's no sort of dynamic typing here or anything like that. And then I just wrap it in a couple of brackets and life is good. So I'm just going to refresh this now. Um, so we've started the server again anyway, and hopefully that's restarted. So let's just make sure that that's come up. Uh, well, da, da, da. Let's see if our server started, server should be up again now. Let's restart that. HTML. I believe I just need to restart the, make sure that ASP.NET started up. So this is where we don't have the hot module re replacement in, um, in, in F sharp yet. So we just have to wait for, for the watch to kick in. Um, for the for the web app to start up again. So that should be good to go now. Let's try that one last time. Hopefully we've got our list back again now. There we go. So that should be up now. Request starting, there we go, right. So we're back up again now, there's our list. So let's do the same thing again. So I'm gonna say learn F sharp Layla and add that in. So that's gone to the back end. Now I'm gonna hit reset. And that will have also sent a message now to the back end. I can see here, we've called reset. And indeed, if I now refresh this list, you'll see we get nothing. So there's no items there at all. So that's kind of the, the flow. Um, there's no sort of custom tooling needed. This is just normal F sharp code. There's no extra sort of wizards or, or GUI extensions. It's just pure F sharp. You can run this in Blade, in, um, in Rider, in VS Code, in Visual Studio. It runs cross-platform. It all just works, and it's all built on top of standards. Um, there's no sort of custom tooling needed, really. So with that, I'm going to jump back to other slides. I've still got five minutes left, um, which should be ample. So um, just to sort of re reinforce that and really drive that home, um, this is not vaporware or magic. We've been writing this for a few years now. We've been doing systems for the large organizations using this tech. We're not the only people doing it, obviously. Um, F Sharp and .NET and JavaScript. Um, so we're not trying to hide these tech away from you. We're not trying to, to uh, somehow encapsulate or abstract away JavaScript. We don't want to do that. We think JavaScript's a great ecosystem. It's a great place to be. We just want to make sure that you have that safety of F Sharp with the static type system and on top of it to really give it kind of go faster stripes, if you will. Um, no walled gardens, you can interrupt with any JS library. Um, you can even drop into dynamic land if you really want to. Um, robust, succinct, and simple, um, pr productive, flexible, and fun. It really is enjoyable. Um, 
I can speak personally. I was a back end dev. I never really got involved in like the the front end. I did a bit of ASP.NET MVC. Um, when we started using this tech, it's when we as an organization really were able to do end to end applications. So um, really great in that regard. A few words on themes of like .NET 6. So obviously you've got minimal APIs in ASP.NET Core and even C Sharp now. That's kind of a big thing in .NET now. Um, this has been a core part of F Sharp for years and years. There's a, a long history of why that is, but basically F Sharp has always been about code first, um, keep things simple, minimal APIs without lots of ceremony. So if you like that and you're excited by that kind of direction that C-sharp is going in and .NET in general, then you'll probably find F-sharp a natural home in, in that regard. Um, because we sit on top of .NET, we automatically take advantage of most of the new features. So the only one really that we don't get is, is .NET Hot Reload at the moment. Maybe that'll come in the future. But as you've seen, that's already a feature of SafeStack on the client. On the back end, it's not such an issue because we use .NET Watch. So you make a change on the server, the server stops and starts. Within a few seconds, it's normally back up and running. Um, and lastly, we get to take advantage of all the performance gains that .NET gets every time. Um, why? Because SafeStack runs on ASP.NET Core. So we get all that, the, the great stuff that David Fowler's team have been doing. We get all that for free, really not, not an issue. Um, just an example of what I mean by minimal APIs. Um, so you can use the new minimal API stuff in ASP.NET Core, not a problem. This is what um, Saturn and Giraffe, which are the, these two kind of extension libraries look like. So this is what a minimal app in f -sharp has looked like for probably three or four years now um, in terms of ASP.NET Core. So basically say, I want to create an application, use this router, always give back the text, hello world, run my app. Behind the scenes, you can see here, it's using the, the ASP.NET extensions iHouse Builder. So that's normal ASP.NET. We just give you some extensions to make it a bit easy to create. And as you can see here, this is indeed Kestrel running um, ASP.NET Core. So it really is the same thing. It's just we give you these extra extensions if you want to make things a bit more lightweight, really. Um, just a couple of links at the end here. So SafeStack GitHub IO, which is basically um, the, the homepage for SafeStack. Um, we've got docs on there. We've got some um, support links. Um, the demo app that I showed you, you can go and have a play with that. All the source code's online. The whole thing's open source. Um, so there's, there's no secrets there. Um, and I'll just end with um, my Twitter link, um, email address, and, and our website. Um, I think I'll, I'll turn back to you now, Leila, if there's any questions. If not, and we've got a couple of minutes, I can always just show a couple more web pages like F-Sharp Walk. Well, uh, thank you so much for that, Isaac. And uh, thank you for those links there as well. Um, I think the simplified app that we just saw, the to-do list, actually helped me understand it more. Um, I got a bit more of that and I feel excited to have another go. Oh, great. Um, the workshops I have done were to build that uh, police tracker app and it just blew my little brain, um, <laughs> which isn't hard. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, I've been doing some Python, so I'm getting used to having things, you know, formatted correctly. So uh, thank you very much for that really clear and concise demo. Now, I had a look around for some questions. I didn't see any, just uh, we've had some collapse on Twitch. Uh, so uh, that was really great. Um, okay. So thank you very much. Not and, at all. Um, yeah. Have an um, enjoy the rest of your day and the rest you of your comp, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Take care. Good luck for the rest of the day. Bye. Thank you.